have a, a big Christmas tradition, you know, and those, uh, those are the traditions that you really look forward to all year long, especially as children. And then you get older, you look forward to them, but for different reasons. It becomes less about the gifts, you know, under the tree. It becomes more about, about the gifts that, that are around the tree and family. And about 13 years ago, when my father passed away, he was kind of the head of all those traditions, you know. And, and when he passed away, it seemed like those traditions just kind of crumbled away. And then a few years ago, my mom and my sister passed away. It seems like those traditions have become less and less. I've kind of started a tradition now, too, where we would like to watch uh, Christmas movies. And uh, I think it used to be a Christmas story. Anybody watch a Christmas story? I think one reason is because I looked like Ralph. I was really nerdy, and, and I had the bowl haircut that my dad made me. But I like, to look, I like to watch that one, you know, because it makes you think about things you did as a kid. You're like, man, I can remember just saying those stupid things and doing those stupid things and wanting that one gift with all your heart and, and getting that great gift. And, and then now it's changed. This year I realized that my poor wife is probably so tired of that. Has anybody seen the Disney's A Christmas Carol? Wow, it's really popular, I can tell. One, one other person has seen it. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. What I love about the Christmas carol, though, is I woke up this morning thinking about that. You know, it, 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 reminds, me, it reminds me of Christ. I started thinking about that, and I, and, I, and I wrote this down. It reminds me of Christ because the, the ghost of Christmas past comes, in, and, and he, he, he reminds me that our past experiences, you know, shape us in who we are today. And we can live a life of using those past experiences to, be, to become bitter, to become hardened, to stay where we are and, and, and be that way because we have no purpose or no future without Christ. And then the ghost of Christmas present comes and it reminds me that, that when the light of Christ comes into us and, and it shows us who we are, and then it shows us that we have a chance, and it shows us who, who Christ is, and it shows us our effect. Do you know that you affect everyone around you? You may not think that, and you may not know that. Like in the story of Scrooge, he comes and he brings him in the Christmas present, and he sees people talking about him, and he sees what he has done and the way he lives and how it affects others. And that's the way we are. Christ opens our eyes to see that, that, man, my actions, my thoughts, my words, they affect other people. And it reminds me, as Scrooge had, it reminds me of that blindness. We're talking about the light today. It reminds me of that, that blindness of pride and the blindness of, of unforgiveness and the blindness of bitterness, what it, what it changes us and who it makes us to be. And then comes the scary one, and that's the Christmas future. And you know what Ghost of Christmas Future reminds me of? It reminds me of, of God's Word. Because when we come to see and we read God's Word, it reveals to us who we are, and it also shows us what our future can be. It shows Scrooge a future of what it could be without change, without God. And you know what that led to? It led to one thing that Scrooge was terrified of, and that was death. It led to death and to darkness. And without God, without Christ, that's all our future leads to. But what does the, the ghost of Christmas future show us? What does Christ show us? He also shows us in God's word what it can be with him when we decide to receive him. And when we change, and what does he also show us as he showed Scrooge, as he shows everyone in this room today, that he shows us that we have a choice. We can continue to live in the past and be bitter and unforgiving, or we can choose to receive the light of Christ and have a new future laid out for us where there is no death and there is no darkness. And I began to think also about New Year's. You know, we're coming up on New Year's. Who in here, you know, we talk about making New Year's resolutions 
all the time. And, and it's so funny that we spend our time setting these things mostly that we're not going to do. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to quit cussing. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to quit eating junk food. You know, I, I, I thought about quitting drinking so much coffee, but then I thought my dad never raised a quitter either. So <laughs> I think I'm passing on that one. But then it reminded me of, there's, there's a man in our group and a man in our church, and his name is Ron, and he, he reminded me a while back that, uh, you know, sometimes I get so busy concentrating on what I should not be doing and what others should not be doing that we forget about what we should be doing. We forget about how we should be living. We get so busy about seeing what's wrong in others we forget how to love and we forget how to forgive. So this, this year, we don't have to wait till the New Year's resolution. You know, one thing I liked about Scrooge, too, is at the end, you know, when a kid, we were talking about it driving in this morning, when Christmas is over, it's kind of a letdown. One thing they said at the end of that Christmas carol is he learned to carry Christmas in his heart. That's what we do as Christians. We carry Christ. Christ is in our heart. And we carry that light in our heart to, to a new future. The past no longer holds us down. So today we're going to look at how do we do that. It's about walking in the light. This is not a, just about coming and hearing about the light. We spoke about that Christmas Eve that the light has came into the world. What an amazing story that is. One thing amazes me about the light of Christ coming into the world like that, that we all talk about he came in the nativity and he, and he came with all of these things and he humbled himself. But what's really amazing is so many people missed it. And who he came to, he came, he came, he came to the humble because he knew they would receive him. He didn't go to the kings and the glory and the princes. He came to the humble who need who knew they needed a savior. So how do we do that? How do we walk in the light? Let's look at this. Our first point today is, is we're going to talk about this. Is we're going to live in fellowship. We read in verse 5. You pull out your outlines. Let's read together. He says, this is the message which we have heard from him. Who has he heard it from? He heard it from, from Christ. This is John who walked with Christ talked with Christ, ate with Christ, lived with Christ. This is firsthand. He is telling us how we can live. This is not something that, just some other book. This is the word of God telling us that this man, he walked with Christ. And he says, this, this is the message. He's telling those other people around him. Also, something that's so funny is, is the people that thought they knew most about Jesus, the Pharisees, and the religious leaders were the ones who couldn't see him. I realize that Christmas Eve, we're doing that message. You know what's so funny? We have so much religion sometimes, we can't see Jesus. We have to step back, and that's what he's telling John when John is writing to the church. He's telling, guys, guys, we're, 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 we're going out here. We need to come together. This is, who, this is what we've heard from Jesus. And that's what we stick to, what we heard from Jesus. Not what we heard from somewhere else and somewhere else. This is what we heard from him. He said, and I declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. When I began to think about that this morning, one word came up to me about God when we say that there is no darkness in God at all. You know what that word is? That is trustworthy. God is trustworthy. Think of anybody else in this world that you could truly say is truly trustworthy. God, Christ incarnate, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity are the only things, the only people that are truly trustworthy. Why? Because there is no darkness at all. And God is light. And God, what does light do? Light does several things, you know. That's why we kind of are afraid to go to the light sometimes because the light, one, reveals. We'll see about that. The light reveals who we are. But you know what the light also does? We read this and the light of God's word reveals who we can be. 
That's what we have to look at. It doesn't just, we, we have to reveal who we are first. And that's why people are afraid to believe in God, I believe, because they don't want anybody to see who they are. And then on the other hand, sometimes we're afraid to come to God because that light opens our eyes and we see who we are. But that's what God wants us to do. He shines his light upon us to, to see who we are. And then I am in need, desperate need of a savior. I'm in need of that light. It reveals things in us. It reveals who we are. It reveals who we can be. And it also guides us. God is the light that guides us. God's light is his wisdom. God's light is his perfectness. God's light is his love. There is nothing missing in God. You want to find wholeness and completeness. That's when we come to God. Because there is no dark spots in him. There is no darkness. He hides nothing from anybody. He calls us to come and see who he truly, truly is. We look verse Six, it says, if we say, that's what I just talked about a, a, a minute ago. We talked about the Pharisees. The Pharisees were busy walking around saying different things. Look at me. I'm a religious leader. Look at me. I put this time in. Look at me. I've gone over here and I've done all this. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> if we say, guys, we got to stop worrying about what we say and start worrying about what we do. That's what we're talking about, walking in the light. You know, Christ tells us it does no good if you say you're just hearers of the word, but be what? Be doers of the word. So if we say that we have fellowship with him, when we come in here and we just say that on Sunday mornings I love Jesus and I have fellowship with him, but then we walk out of here, if we walk in darkness, if we walk in religion and not a relationship with Jesus Christ, and what does it say, guys? We, we what? We lie. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and what is fellowship with him? This is living in fellowship. Do you have fellowship with God? Or have you fallen out of fellowship with God? And there's a difference. Anybody in here really feel those times when you have true fellowship with God? So you feel his presence upon you and, you and you know that God is there and God is guiding you and you have no doubts about that and you have that fellowship with him. You know what, guys? God doesn't step away from that fellowship. We step away from that fellowship. We turn to our own needs. You know what usually happens is we walk in fellowship with, with, with maybe I'll say what usually happens with me. When I walk in fellowship with God, it's like he, he, he I think he, hands me that baton in the race, you know, and you take the baton and you're like, all right, God, you stay back over here. I got it from now. And you know, we run with that baton. <laughs> when we need God in front of us, you know, we always talk about, man, oh, God is my co-pilot. Well, if God is your co-pilot, you are out of luck, brother. God needs to be your pilot. God needs to be one flying the plane because he's the only one that knows how the controls work. <laughs> I mean, think about that. You know, we flew back from Nashville. You know what? I, what those poor people on the plane, if I stand up and say, oh, I got this. I'm telling you, there's going to be some people jumping off that plane. You know, my kids don't even like the way I drive a car, much less fly a plane. We lie when we do that and do not practice the truth. I like the word practice as well. Guys, you know what? Being a Christian... <laughs> We don't get it all down in one time, do we? It takes a lot of practice. And have you ever known that God knows what you need practice on? Some days I just don't like that about God. I smile and say that. Because <laughs> I feel like, you know, sometimes, Lord, I, I, I thought I'd practice that enough. And he says, no, you, you still need more practice. Practice in, in, in loving. Practice in kindness. Practice in giving, practice in, in letting go of my pride and, and letting go of greed and, and practicing the truth of seeing the truth in ourselves. We have to practice that. We, we have to stop and, and look at the truth within ourselves. We have to come to God's word every day 
And that is practicing the truth. When I come and I read God's word every day, I can see the truth about who I am, who I can be, and who Christ is making me to be. But we have to practice that truth. And then he says, so this is, we walk in darkness, we are liars, and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, that means we walk in the wisdom of God's word. That means we walk with fellowship with God. We take time with God. This year, guys, we have to make time with God. You know, we have to stop and look back that. We can all say that, man, I've just been so busy. Well, you know what? I haven't been so busy that I haven't given up some of my other things that I do. And they believe God would be more important. But when we walk in the light, that means, you know what? When, when we come to Christ and say, Lord, look, look, look inside me. Reveal to me what you want me to change. Reveal to me who I am. Reveal to me what you want to do with me. Shine that light on me. That's a scary thing sometimes. You know, we as a society are so against revealing the truth of who we are. We mask everything. We, we, don't even, we don't even know what gender we are anymore. If we don't like it, we change it. You know, and that's so ridiculous to me. Or, 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 or we, we, we substance over it. Or, or we binge over it. Instead of letting Christ shine that light in us and, and, and change us in that. So we walk in that light. We walk in the wisdom of God. We walk in the love of God. We walk in fellowship. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And that's talking about we have fellowship with Christ. We have fellowship with God. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from, I want you to circle that word, guys, all he cleanses us from all sins, not just the little ones that you think, oh, yeah, I think God can forgive that. No, his blood was enough to forgive you from every sin, from all sins. And look at that, the blood, that's what we, we, we celebrate, the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood had to be paid. We got to stop and look at this too, what this cost Christ. And that is what cleanses us from all sin. Number two, we have to live in confession. Man, you know, I, I thought about today having like confession Sunday. And I thought we could all write one big confession on, on, the, on the outline and then put it all here. And then I could take one and read them and we would like guess who it was. That would be all. I think that would be awesome. I see a fear in a lot of people's eyes like, oh, I hope he doesn't do that. I hope he doesn't do that. Oh, I would never read mine. Don't worry. <laughs> we have to live in confession. You know, for so long, I, I lived in, in trying to be who I thought people wanted me to be. And that's, that's not walking in the light. That's walking in darkness because I'm hiding who I really am. You know, I have a confession to make. Y'all were here a couple of weeks ago, and I just bombed my sermon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just, you're just nice because you know I may say something about you up here while I'm on the microphone. No, seriously. I, I, I studied, and, and I looked at this message, and I was watching John MacArthur, and I love John MacArthur. I love the way he speaks. I love the way he in, interprets the Bible, and I love the way he... he preaches and, 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 and I was watching him and I was listening to him and I was like, man, that's the message I want to give. And that's the way I want to give the message. And I was in the middle of trying to give this message as the person of John MacArthur. And God said, took those thoughts away and said, boop. <laughs> and you remember, I stood up here. And I was like, I have no clue what I was just going to say. <laughs> because you know what? God made you to be you. And you walk in the light that he shines on you and he made you to be you. He didn't make you to be somebody else and he didn't make me to be John MacArthur. He made me to be Brian Shanklin and speak Amen. God's word as Brian Shanklin speaks. 
But when we say we, we don't live that way, he says what we do, we say that we have no sin. What do we do? We, we deceive our. You're not deceiving everybody else, guys. You're deceiving yourself. When I stand up here and I say that, man, I, I, you know, I, I've also learned that that's a scary thing. I don't know about you, but when I start thinking of, man, oh, I've got this down, that's the time I really start praying harder. All right, God, I don't got this down because I know he's about to show me that I don't have this down. <laughs> you know, anybody ever know that? That's, what's that whole thing, that, you know, those things we talk about, knock on wood or, or don't say that with jinx. Don't say that. You just jinx me. You know, that's such funny that we, we, we talk like that, but some of that is the truth. You start beginning, oh, I've got this. And God's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> because God is a loving God and God is a growing God. You know, God wants to grow us. So when we say that we, we can't get any better, that we don't need change, that, that we have no sin, what does he say? We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, when we come before God, one thing we have to do as well is pray, God, reveal my sinfulness. Reveal that to me. Even, man, that's, that's hard to ask for. But what does it say? He is faithful and just. He is faithful. Even when we are not. That's why he came, because we weren't. <laughs> But he was. He was faithful to the very beginning in the book of Genesis when he made the skins to cover their sins. He said, I'm faithful. And he has remained faithful and he will be faithful. And he is just. That's why Christ, we don't talk about just Christ came and he wanted to do that. No, Christ had to come. We have to get to that point. Christ had to to come and die for us because of God is just. If God was not just, he could have turned a blind eye and figured out another way. But God being just, he cannot change his nature. When you are just, something has to pay for a wrong. And God being a perfectly just judge and a just God had to receive a payment and had to put his wrath upon the sins. And the only one that was worthy to take that was Jesus Christ. He had to come for our sins. But if we confess our sins, it says he is faithful and just. If, if, and look at yourself. We talked about fellowship. If you feel that you are not walking in fellowship with God, it's, it's not because God has turned away. It's because we have turned away or we are living in a sin that we don't want to quite let go of. That's the whole thing. We also have to learn to, to teach people about that. You know, they, they think as Christians we're, we're, we're homophobes. We talk about homosexuality being wrong. No, it's a sin. But it's the same thing as my pride is a sin. Our, our, our racism is a sin. All of these things are sins, and we have to get them to see that. That, that I can't live in, in my pride in this and say, oh, I'm okay. I love God, but. No, there's no buts with God. Right. You love God, you got to give up right. those buts. <laughs> he says that we confess our sins, faithful and just to forgive us. And this is confession. This is not just talking about, you know, we, we get those as, as we do our friends, you know. Oh, man, I'm sorry, man. No, this is, this, is a, this is a mourning over my sin. This is, Lord God, this, this, this cost you everything. What you have done for me, I'm sorry. And I am repentant. Change me, Lord. And what does he say? He forgives us. Not as only he just forgives us, but what does he do? He cleanses us. That guy, have you ever thought about that? He doesn't just forgive you, but he makes you new. He cleanses you. How amazing is that? He washes you. The blood of Christ washes you clean. When we receive that and we know what it has done for me, it cleanses me of all unrighteousness. And I can begin to live a righteous life for him. 
And number three, man, this is a hard one. We live in fellowship. We live in confession when we confess. You know, we, we have to learn to confess as well because <laughs> I don't think he's going to cleanse us what we don't bring to him to be cleansed. And number three is living in love. He says again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away. That's good news, guys. The light has come into the world. We talked about that on Christmas Eve. The light has come into the world and the darkness is passing away. We may not see that yet, but the darkness is passing away. But we have to stop and figure out what we're looking at. Are you focused on the darkness or are you focused on the light? Guys, we as Christians have to be focused on the light. You know, I thought about that a lot this week of of who I am. I'm I'm a dad. I'm I'm a husband. I'm a a manager. I'm I'm a worker. I'm, I'm a lot of different things. But you know what? Before all of those come, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christ follower. And I have to base that on how I am a father on how I am a husband, on how I am an employer. And I have to live that, and I have to do all of those things in love because the first one is all about love. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is a commandment he writes to us, which is true in him. What does that mean? That he loves us because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Guys, he is already here and he is shining his light. We just have to choose to look for it. This world is not looking for it. And he says, he who says he is in the light, and here's the, where the truth hits us, if we are walking in the light or not. He says, he who says he is in the light, when I come and I say that I am a Christian, you don't talk about confession, <laughs> but I hate my brother. What does he say? He's in darkness till now. So what does that tell us? What is, what is darkness? Darkness is hatred. And darkness is prejudice. And darkness is pride, and and darkness is greed, and and darkness is racism. And this says, he who loves his brother abides in the light. You know, I have a confession to make. We talk about that. I, I I was walking in darkness. We stand up here and we talk about how I walk in light, but when I have someone in my mind that I don't like, You know, I, I, have a, I have a stepson. His name is Matthew. You heard, y'all may have heard me talking about this, the, the earlier on the roller coasters about Matthew. Okay, y'all may not catch the meaning of that because y'all don't know how, who Matthew is. When me and my wife first got married, did anybody have stepkids? Huh. Uh, we were not on very good terms, let's say. Because we realized that we were so much alike. <laughs> you know, we butted heads. He, he's, uh, uh, he's very, he was very uh, oh man, I can't even think of the word. So he has autism. He has several other things, but he was very, you know, you told him to do something and, and he was not going to do it. <laughs> that was his thing, especially for me. When I told him to do something, it was going to be the completely other way around. But you know what? I realized that, that I told my wife the other day, you want to start changing someone? You know who that begins with? Hey, man, it begins with you. I had that hate and bitterness and anger in my heart. And I could stand up here and, and I could preach and I could talk about that. But that's not living in light. That's living in darkness. And Christ came and he revealed 
that and his light shined in there. And I can testify, we have a long way to go. But I can testify that I love that boy. And he loves me. And you may not understand that, but that's very powerful because he does not love very much. And he probably smiled this week more than I have ever seen that kid smile in my life. But praise God when Christ's light comes in and he reveals those things to us. So if there's someone in your life today, we cannot sit here and say that we are Christians walking in the light if you're harboring bitterness and anger and hate toward your brother, toward someone. He says, why? Because you are in darkness until now. He who loves his brother, what do we do? We remain in the light. We abide in the light and stay in the light. And there is no cause for stumbling in him. You know, guys, when, when I uh, was young, we always wanted a special gift. Anybody in here ever wished for just that special gift? You know, Ralphie wanted the, the Red Rider BB gun. Uh, or you wanted a certain thing like that. You know what I thought about this year is, is I, I told my wife that if I could have anything <laughs> for Christmas, it would be a time machine. <laughs> but I wouldn't go back and, 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 and change who I was because God made me that way. And God is using those things to make me who I am. But there are some times that I would like to go back and use that time machine to stand still a little longer. To tell some people bye a little longer. To take back some of the things that I've said to somebody. And then to say some of the things that I didn't say to somebody. But you know what, guys? We don't have a time machine. We started here at 10 o'clock, and we can never get that time back. The reason I'm telling you that now is look at the person next to you. Amen. And love them. And if you have something with them, confess it and love them. You know, we talked about, we just got back from Tennessee, and I talked about this on Christmas Eve service in Gerald. One thing that amazes me is when we were in, we went to, to uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I don't know if anybody's ever been there before. We were kind of like, oh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. My wife had booked this trip. And, I, you know, like I say, me and all the other four children were like a bunch of whiny kids. Oh, we're going to Gatlinburg. <laughs> oh, and then we left there like, man, this is like the greatest vacation we've ever been on. She's so amazing. <laughs> and uh, uh, man, I tell you, you ever go on Christmas, it, it is like Christmas on super steroids. Uh, wow. <laughs> Lights and people and stuff and everything. It's like sensory overload. But we stayed up in a cabin in the middle of the, the Smoky Mountains. Beautiful. I didn't realize the Smoky Mountains were that pretty. Just, just walking out there, and it's so beautiful. But you know one of the main amazing things that we realized is where we were in a cabin. It looked over the mountain over there, <clears throat> and right across the street was the foundation of an old house because you know what happened in 2006? All those smoky mountains that we were standing on burnt to the ground. The houses, the structures, the buildings, the trees burnt to the ground. But you know what God does? God is a rebuilder. God is a restorer. But one thing I realized, though, is we talk about living in the light today is it's a choice because we stayed in a cabin that had been rebuilt and was beautiful, and you looked across and you saw the foundation that was there, and it was gone, and it was sad because you know why? They chose not to rebuild. 
God is a rebuilder, but we have to choose to want to rebuild. So I pray today if there's some people that you need to rebuild something with, especially that relationship with Jesus Christ, that we rebuild that relationship, that we take hold of that light today. Would you bow your heads? and You know, we don't bow our heads because that's just the way we pray. We bow our heads because we bow our lives before an amazing God who can take things that have been burnt to the ground, who can take things that have been devastated and rebuild them, who can take darkness and when he comes with his light, that darkness, it says, will flee. He can even take the thing that most of us worry about and that is death. And death runs away when we come into the life of Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your amazing light that you have given us in the person of Jesus Christ. Help us today, Lord. Reveal what needs to be revealed in that light, Lord, and help us to receive that light and go out into this world and show that, show that light to others, to stop looking at what everybody's doing wrong, Lord, and shining a light on who Christ is and how much he loves those that even do not know him yet. Help us as you tell us to be the light to the world, Lord. Thank you so much. We come to this Christmas season and we celebrate gifts. And we celebrate the greatest gift ever given. And that is the gift of yourself in the person of Jesus Christ. And of his amazing, beautiful, majestic name we pray.